during the course of a research and design process, um, you kind of find yourself indirectly creating three lists. The first list is um, all of the things you know that this production should be. The second list is all of the things you know this production shouldn't be. And the third list is almost the most interesting, but definitely the most challenging, which is uh, the kind of instinct list, all of the things that you, you sense that this production could be that have excited you about the novel and you know are unique to the adapter's voice and to the way that you like to bring a company together in a rehearsal room. And actually, um, so many of the elements of that third list um, are, are things that have really preoccupied us over the last six months. One of them is uh, that Huxley, in his introduction to the novel, um, says that uh, there are things in his world that literature cannot express, but he goes on to say that he thinks that music can capture a sense of the inexpressible, often uh, better than language can. And that's why when Huxley himself recorded a radio recording of Brave New World, um, it had a full orchestral soundtrack. Now, we've always had a very strong instinct that the ceremonies, the rituals, the big set pieces of our stage adaptation should use music as a kind of key storyteller. But actually, we've had to make a coherent argument for why that's the case. It wasn't something that lived in our first list or our second list when we started the process.